Okay, so the next conspiracy we're going to talk about was something that I've been aware of for a long, long time. I was a kid. This really, this conspiracy really started in like 1994, 1996. So I had just graduated high school. And back then, everything was pretty much in book form. There weren't a lot of websites on conspiracies, or they were, but you couldn't find them unless you had the web address. You didn't really know what to look for. And I remember hearing about this conspiracy theory, and it really scared me. Like, it was one of the ones that I thought was absolutely possible. I remember just it being like, oh man, like if this happens, this will fool millions of people, and, and all of these things will come true, and so on. I was a, I was a kid. Uh, yeah, it, it was quite terrifying to me and i don't know why like looking back on it it's completely ridiculous but i also believed at the time that when clinton was clinton was going to install death camps and when he lost the election you know he didn't lose the election but when he stops being president he's not going to leave office he's going to take over the country and he's going to throw everyone into a death camp all that nonsense that whole agenda 21 that's been around for the past three presidents. Bush isn't going to leave office. He's going to set up a... Obama's not going to leave office. He's going to set up a... But anyways, I had been researching conspiracy theories and paranormal and stuff like that since I was 12. And I remember coming across this and I was like, this is plausible. This is a plausible conspiracy theory. Now, what's interesting was, I don't think it's plausible so much anymore. But not because of what it includes. This was always an interesting puzzle for me. Just like Comet Elenin, I did that episode about Comet Elenin. I have my own theory about Bluebeam, but let's talk about Project Bluebeam first, and then I'll get into my theory. So Project Bluebeam, there was a book published in 1994 called Project Bluebeam by a Quebecy. He's from Quebec, Quebecois. Quebecian. His name was Serge Monest, sir, which is a pretty dope name. I'm sure people are like, no, it's Sergi Monista. But anyways, we're going to call him Serge. So Serge Monest was, uh, wrote this book called Project Bluebeam in 1994. Now, he had a bit of a conspiracy involving himself as well. He was homeschooling his children and the police took him away. They're like, you can't homeschool your kids. And he was like, no, you got to let me homeschool my kids. And he said the police were after him, and they were because they were after him to get his kids. And they removed the kids from the house. He got arrested. And then the next day, he died of a heart attack. And conspiracy theorists have said all of that had to come down to him exposing the truth of Project Bluebeam. Now, we'll get back to his death in a second. But let's go ahead and move on to what actually Project Bluebeam is. Now, Project Bluebeam, Project Bluebeam had four steps. Step one. There was going to be staged earthquakes all over the world. Oh, look out. Uh, run. Uh, people are throwing their pets under the rubble and taking them to the vet. Oh, no, look at Please give me some pills. So Serge Mon- Monast, Serge, said that... I'm pretty sure it's Ser- Sergei, but it's, uh, whatever. Uh, Serge was like, there's going to be these staged earthquakes all over the world. And what's going to happen is it's going to reveal these documents, the stone tablets, these texts, showing other religions are wrong. So you would find relics that disprove Muhammad was the prophet. You would find relics that would disprove Buddhism and disprove Christianity and all this stuff. So that would be the first step. So first people would be like, that's weird. We found these stone tablets that show Jesus like kicking a kid down the street. Maybe we should double think our whole Christianity thing. So you're like, okay, that's that's a plausible. That's like chapter one of a disaster novel, kind of like an intriguing thriller. There's earthquakes that are staged by the government, and people are finding these texts that disprove what we think of as history. You're like, okay, that's fairly plausible, Jason. Step two, space holograms. So <laughs> step two was this. Each region in the world, based on whatever national faith was the most popular, you would see, like, over America and Europe, you would see Jesus appear in the sky. just be, Which would be terrifying. And I think that was one of the reasons why this one terrified me. There's, it, it gets creepier, but imagine you're just walking down the street one day, and you see everyone looking up at the sky, and you look up and you just see a giant Jesus floating in the sky. Like a 30-foot tall Jesus. And then in the Middle East, they look up and they'll see... Allah or Muhammad, but here's the problem. They don't really know what he looks like. 
because they don't have any pictures of him. Not like there's pictures of Jesus, but, you know, at least there's representations of what we think, of what we... It, 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 that's not what he looks like at all. He was Jewish and he was short, but, you know, you have like, oh, if 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 even an atheist looked up in the sky, he could be like, oh, that looks, that, that looks like how Jesus is portrayed in the media. So I don't know what you would see in the Middle East. And, and then Judaism would just have like some old dude, some old God, Moses looking dude. And then Buddhism would have Buddha floating around. I guess in like atheist countries, it would just be a blank sky. You just look up and go like sunny day out. Yeah. Look at that. Nothing. I heard in America, Jesus is floating around, but up here is just the sun. So anyways, religious uh, icons from all over the world appear. And that, dude, could you imagine being in India then? It would just be like this fiery, like, eight-armed elephant riding four donkeys. I'd be like, ah, oh, oh, man, why do I just get the Jesus hologram? Anyways, so all these holograms appear, and then they all shape-shift to form the same vision of this new god. And then it's like, I am the one true god. Worship me. Like, all the, I've shown you that the texts from the old world were wrong, I caused the earthquakes. I am the true God. It puts something in your head that if you don't follow the instructions of this new God, it actually will start to drive you insane. And you may kill yourself. So you almost feel drawn to do whatever this hologram says. So apparently the way that this works is it's the holograms are based. There's a satellite that can shoot holograms. It projects them on the sodium layer, which is apparently 60 miles up. Encircling the entire planet, there's something called the sodium layer that can work as a film screen and that's what ufos are they're just all holograms it's the system being tested they've apparently had this technology since you know the 1940s and it's all just a test to see if they can actually get people to look up at the sky and see something ridiculous and believe in it and this satellite can also uh, abduct people and the reason why it's set up to do that is it's to simulate the rapture which is in christian lore in some Christian lore, there's a lot of debate over whether or not it's even in the Bible, but that all the believers will be raptured up and taken off the planet, and everyone else is left to suffer while the Antichrist is doing his crazy thing on Earth. So it would just suck up a bunch of people, and you'd be like, I told you the rapture was true, ah, flying up, and then they like slowly freeze to death. I, it, That's kind of vague. They don't say where those people go if the if space is just littered with a bunch of bodies, because they're obviously not getting raptured, they're just being sucked up into the sky. The UN decides to use the song Ode to Joy as their song to unite the people. You know, that song. And so that is going to be that song. And it's almost like, so that you have those factions. You have the people who believe 100%. And then you have the people that are going crazy and just massive unrest. And the UN starts to create this new world order and they use Ode to Joy as their theme song. That's all stage two. And you're like, man, there's two more stages? Yes, two more stages. Stage three, telepathy. So all the knowledge we have of Bluebeam, because the book is out of print. There's a few mentions. Now now there's more information, but at the time, at, it's at the time of Serge's death, there was a few mentions on the internet, a transcript of a lecture, and that's it. So some of the information is spotty on what his theories actually were. But so step three had is labeled uh, telepathy. And it says that it talks about this thing called the telepathic electronic two-way communication. And it's basically a direct or indirect communication into your head from this satellite. So it's beaming stuff in your head and you can either contact it. You can either read your mind and you can talk to it. Or it's just images being broadcast into your head. And that it's weird that that's its own step because that's kind of implied in step two. Step four is the end game. So we've all seen this. There's massive riots. People are really just like, I guess my religion is fake. And I must serve this new God or this religion's fake and I'm fighting it. Oh, my head. Oh, and then they start rioting. Step four is the end game of Bluebeam. And there's three different scenarios. So one of these three will happen once Project Bluebeam's gotten to stage four. One, people aren't down with the whole Jesus religious thing. People see it and they're just like, that's not my God. Even the people who, like, it doesn't basically work for them or the tele telepathy thing isn't working or whatever. So I, I it's kind of weird because these are almost like, these. these are the final step, but it's almost like... 
their contingency plan. So let's say the Jesus thing doesn't work. Everyone's like, they see a plane fly through Jesus. They're like, that's not Jesus. They then use Blue Beam to show an alien invasion. A full-on alien invasion being projected into our skies. Countries fire nukes at them, which is what they would do. The nukes obviously fail because they're holograms. And then it's revealed it was all a trick. It was all a trick. But the fact that governments could be confused by these holographic UFOs and previous holographic Jesus shows that they can't have nuclear weapons, so their nuclear weapons are taken away. So that's that's one scenario that happens. Scenario two is that uh, all the Christians get raptured by aliens because there's an evil demonic force coming. So, And again, you're like, Jason, that doesn't make sense because Jesus was just floating around. But they, they Because we don't have a ton of information on Project Bluebeam. But again, contingency plans. These may be the setup for if they decide to not go with the Jesus thing, actually. We kind of have to guess at this point. But it's that uh, Christians get raptured and everyone else is like, why are we left? And they're like, oh, you'll find out. <laughs> there's a bunch of demons coming in space. And then the third one is that there is using fiber optic cables. And again, you're like, okay, that's all like, again, science based, you know, radio waves into your head to simulate telepathy. The last contingency plan for Project Bluebeam is that using fiber optic cables, coax cables, telephone cables, electrical cables, demons will jump through your electronics and beat you up. Satanic ghosts projected all over the world will show up and be like, Whoa! basically like Ghostbusters. And it would just be like this mass attack from all the supernatural forces. And it would make people go, please, government, save us from all these demons. That's completely ridiculous. And that's weird to say. Out of all the stuff that I've just read, that has to be one of the dumbest possible scenarios. Demons are jumping out of your coax cable and scaring you so much you ask the government to help you. That's, I, I think at that point, Serge was just like, ah, oh, whatever, dude, I'm just done. He said that at the end of the lecture because he needed to go get a drink of soda. He's like, they're like, so is that all? And he's like, yeah, um, ghosts come out of your phone. I'll, I'll be back. I'll see you later. The point of Project Bluebeam is to instill. So we have all those scenarios, those four stages and the three contingency plans. The point of Project Bluebeam, you're thinking, well, what's the point? It's to create a police state. It's to create a state of world where people are so fearful, so unsure, so terrified, so demonically possessed, so I can't go near my toaster because Ball Barith may jump out of it. You got hologram Jesus in your sky, your neighbors got raptured, and then you saw their bodies fall when the beam shut off. You got this guy who you think is demonically possessed, and you got ghosts coming out of your fridge every time you open it, so you're like, please government, please form a police state. What I just told you is pretty much everything we know about Project Bluebeam. Because again, there's not a lot of information on it. But there's just enough to get the creative juices flowing. Now, the thing is, is like I use, I, and I've talked about this in other episodes. Conspiracy theories that nobody knows about, they tend to be true. Now, that's, I know that sounds weird, but I've come across conspiracy theories that there is a very, very limited amount of information on. And they're kind of tucked away in corners of the internet and you read it and you're like, oh my God. And then you try to do research on it and there's nothing. And again, it means a few things. One, it can mean that it's totally fake. It's like absolutely made up and it never caught on. Two, it means that it's it's still fake, but I, one could be that they're just lying and making it up. Full stop. The second one is that it's fake, but it hasn't gotten popular yet. And the third one is it's real and it's being actively suppressed. And that's why the information is not getting out there. If 9-11 was a tr really an inside job, nobody would know about it. Gulf of Tonkin, those conspiracy people were like, oh, dude, did you hear about Vietnam? Yeah, they blew up their own boat and they faked this attack and stuff like that. All of that information came out decades later. There may have been an intrepid journalist back then reporting on it. The story never got published because it was an active conspiracy. It wasn't until much later that people were able to actually sit down and confirm that the Gulf of Tonkin didn't happen. So I was like, I heard about it. I couldn't confirm anything of it. I didn't know why at the time, because again, we didn't have a lot of information on it. it I would stumble across it and I'd be like, oh yeah, I remember that one. That one totally scared me. I still couldn't find any additional information. It's very, it was very, very well, it wasn't well known. 
And then what happened was there was a change where it became super popular. In the probably the past 10 years, it's become very common knowledge. Project Blue Beam is this. It's really blown up. This is my theory. My theory is that it was a real plan, not the ghost stuff. Get rid of the ghost stuff. I think that the government did have the technology to do this stuff. And Surge got this information out. And he was taken out of the game. And they were suppre- They were actively suppressing the conspiracy theory you know, for 20 years. And then eventually someone said, we're not going to do that. Like, the plan's not going to work now. It would have worked back then. But nowadays, with CGI being so popular, it's just not going to work. So then they stopped suppressing it. And that's why it's so popular nowadays. That's my theory. That it was actually a plan on the table to use in some fashion. And the information got out. And they were actively pushing it off the grid. And then they just decided not to do it. Because now you can find the information anywhere. So uh, you type in Project Bluebeam. Now you'll find more resources. A ton of YouTube videos and stuff like that. But as a skeptic, we do have to look at a couple different things here real quick. I know the episode's running long. But the whole story about Surge and his kids... I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, what terrible... I wasn't able to find any confirmation that he had kids. I couldn't find any article with the names of his kids. His kids disappeared after it. What happened to him afterwards? They never came forward and say, I believe that my father was killed by the government. They just kind of disappeared. So that story may not be true. We do know that he died, and he got arrested, apparently. But I don't, I, I don't know the details. But again, if you're actively suppressing it, those kids could just have gone into the foster system and then us never know about them. But I did think that was weird that... That story just kind of ended. Now, the biggest pushback to Project Blue Beam is that there was actually a link to an unproduced Star Trek script where there was a guy basically using technology to control a planet. Eventually, it was written for Star Trek. It was called Star Trek Next Voyage or Star Trek The Next Journey. It was a They were going to do a sequel to the original television show, and they decided to do the movie instead. The script that was unproduced went on to be made in 1991 called Devil's Do for Star Trek The Next Generation. And The Devil's Do is, it's actually a pretty good episode. I liked it. This alien, this woman shows up to this planet and she projects herself as a hologram in the sky. She causes earthquakes. She does take on the form of the Christian devil and the Klingon devil. And she captures the Enterprise and she's like, you belong to me. Everyone on this planet belongs to me. They made a deal with me a thousand years ago that I would stop their famine. And then they find out that there's just like a cloaked ship off orbit who, and she has this technology that's more powerful Then even the Enterprise, they weren't able to tell that it was just holograms. They thought it could be something else. So it could be that he saw the original unproduced script for that Star Trek episode, or he'd heard rumors about it and came up with this idea. It could even be that he had a basic idea of what he thought Project Bluebeam was, and the Star Trek episode came out and they melded together. Could be that he saw it. It's totally made up. It could be that he saw the Star Trek episode and thought that was predictive programming that the media will always tell you what happens before it happens which is not true so it could have been you know oh they always got to tell us what they do before they do it that's why they put it in this obscure episode of star trek we don't know he could have just been a guy who was writing fanciful stuff and he died of a heart attack and it was something that is just kind of grown with time it could have been he could have been someone who discovered actual proof that the governments of the world were going to use this program and they took him out. It could also be a little bit of both. It could be that he had an inkling of the truth. He knew he knew enough to be dangerous, but the stuff he didn't know, he filled in the blanks and that's what made it ridiculous. He could have had knowledge of certain parts of the plan and certain pieces of the technology, and it was just enough for the government to go, he's too close. This is too close to what we're trying to do. We may never do it. It's a backup plan. We may never need it, but we can't let this get out. And yeah, the, the, the ghost jumping out of all this. And I know I keep going back to that, but it's just so ridiculous. You know, he added in all this demonic stuff. We're not going to do that. But we do have this satellite that can project these images. He knows too much. So we're going to suppress this story. And, you know, after a period of time, they're like, uh, forget it. They may they stopped paying their suppression bills. And so the story, and they're like, I thought we were suppressing that. Nah, we're not going to do that, Barry. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. We're not going to do that. Did he get assassinated? You know, that's the question. He was 51 years old. He was very, very overweight. He had a heart attack. That's not... 
you know, that's not a statistical anomaly. That's definitely possible. That's in the realm of possibility. Did his kids get taken away? Again, that's the story, but I wasn't able to find any proof of that. If I have anyone from Quebec listening, I, I actually do have some Quebec listeners, but probably not anymore because I'm sure I'm mispronouncing the name of your province. But if you can dig up some police files, I'm like, yes, go go find police files on this guy who may have been assassinated by the government and get back to me. So that's the story of Project Bluebeam and its author, Serge Monast. Did he have kids? Was he killed? Is that part of the story true? Did he stumble across some hidden technology that was going to be used on a later date? I don't know. I have my theory. But I think the story behind Bluebeam is just as interesting as the story of Bluebeam itself. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.